How's it going, you guys? My name is Charles. This is the Trades Corner. Today, we're just going to be doing some analysis on NASDAQ heading into the Friday trading day. So it's January 20th. You know, we've been moving definitely differently as we moved into this new year. You know, we started going bullish, um, but we kind of just moved into a nice fair value gap order block area on the daily to probably move to the downside. Now, what can we see on a daily? What can we see is very clean, you know, relative equal lows, but we also have the same thing up top right we have very clean relative equal highs so we're very range bound at the moment right but as you can see you know we were previously very much in a downtrend so that being said what i'm anticipating where my bias sits right now is that we go for at least one more leg lower to try to break these swing lows now why would we do that well it all goes down to really how i enter my trades and that very much is this idea of what i deem to be what's called a quote unquote new swing low or swing high now new is probably a bad word to describe it but you know trading is very much one of those things where as long as you understand what it is that you're trying to describe I think whatever words you need to use to describe it, that's fine, right? And that's kind of how I've always operated. I've heard concepts or gotten concepts from other traders or teachers. And even though I ex explain exactly what it is that I'm doing in terms of the way that they explain it, and I even tell people like, yeah, this is this concept, that concept from this person, yada, yada, I might just call it something different, right? And you know, that's pretty common in the trading space. But to get back to this analysis, what we're looking at first and foremost is again we've pushed up into this fair value gap order block area and we've started to see a bit of movement lower my thought is that we're going to continue this movement lower but i'm not just going to jump onto any old trade that's going to the downside and we'll see why now first and foremost again why do i think that we will make that, that move lower is again i think we need to make a new swing low from a new swing high and what i mean a new swing high well this is a perfect example of a not new swing high as it was here so if we take this all the way back here and we'll quickly, we'll quickly get out of this if we take this all the way back here right when this happened and it was officially a swing high it wasn't a new swing high by my definition why because this swing high here to the left is higher than it right but as we moved on this one actually became a new swing high why because if we look at the candle the high on this candle is 004 and the high on this candle is yeah this is higher right yeah 100 and this one's 89 so we have this new swing high but as well what we don't get so if you look at the low on this candle six seven four six seven four eight and this one being six seven six four so it barely doesn't make it by two pips right um so we don't get a new low on this high right and then you know eventually again we push higher to do the exact same thing and make a new swing high now what I'm looking for is for us to make a new low on the swing high. Now, it doesn't have to be this one because for us to make a new low from the swing high, we have a very sharp displacement lower, which I'm not gonna anticipate that we're gonna do. But what we could see is a push lower into this area like so. We get another bounce, push down, another bounce with a new swing high, and then we get a push lower before eventually pushing up and then possibly moving higher or just continuing lower. But for right now, all I care about is our movement to the downside in an attempt to break this low. So that is that on the daily 15 minute. What can we see? So this yellow line here is that midnight opening price. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that blue, right? And we can see we're currently below that midnight opening price. So I'm not interested in anything right now. I mean, I'm not interested at all because you know, it's not even seven and that's when I start trading. So that's seven, we'll put that in. But you know, especially with my bias being to the downside, we need to be up above the midnight opening price from seven to 8.30 or after 8.30, we need to be above the 8.30 opening price, okay? So if the 8.30 opening price is below the midnight opening price, I need to throw that in there. So getting down to 15 minute and doing some quick you know, look at how we've been moving on the 15 minute and how we've been moving re recently and what this might mean going forward. As we can see, 
that recently on January 18th, we saw a very sharp push up into, if we go back to the daily very quickly, into this order block area before pushing down, right? And then on the 15 minute, we can see we chopped, well, we pushed up displacement, tried to push up, chopped down, chopped higher, and tried to push down, chopped higher, and tried to push down, chopped higher, and tried to push down, right? So we've kind of been grinding up and down here before a sharp displacement lower. So what does that likely mean? It likely means that other traders are gonna get on the side of going lower, right? Other, you know, common retail traders like you and me, who may be a bit newer in the market, right? So they're likely gonna get on the side of getting lower. But, you know, most traders aren't idiots. They're not just gonna try to just buy, right? When it's like low, 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 low. They're gonna wait. You know, they, they, have, the, they have at least enough sense to wait for what's called a pullback, right? As we see here, we have a pullback. We have a pullback, we have a pullback, we have a pullback, we have a pullback, we have a pullback. We even have a pullback here, right? And what I'm thinking is above each one of these pullbacks, there sits stops. Why? Because somebody saw price displaced lower here. Tiny little pullback. Maybe you are a range trader, you're a range breakout trader, right? And what do we have here? We had a range. We displaced higher, displaced lower, and what do we get? Pull back to the beginning of that range. Perfect, perfect entry for a range breakout trader, right? And again, what do you do? Where would you put your stop? Well, you might put it here, or you might put it here as well, right? But regardless, there's gonna be stops up here because somebody's gonna put their stop up there. Promise you that. Same thing here. Again, we have a pullback. Right, we have a tiny range set up, right? Probably more visible on the one minute, five minute, that kind of stuff. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. We have a tiny range set up, gonna break out higher, break lower, pull back into it, boom, stops, right? And then here, as it pulls back again and rejects it again, again, more stops. So, what am I anticipating? I'm anticipating us trying to get higher. Why am I anticipating that? Again, because I'm I am biased to the downside on the daily time frame, and with me being biased to the downside on the daily time frame, and me needing to be above midnight opening prices, I'm going to look for draws on the market, draws on liquidity that makes sense to the upside, so I can get lower, right? Because here, if we get above these swing highs, what are we going to do? We're going to get these stop losses activated and we're going to force people to become buyers. And again, we're going to see the exact same thing happen on the flip side of what I just described here. Because why? Well, if you think about it, if you're a counter trend trader and you see the sharp displacement lower and then you see here, you see a one final swing high and then a swing low. Right. And then what do we do? Break the swing high. Boom. And then what do we do after that? fail to make a new low boom so if we push and we break more highs what's that going to tell to a reversal trader get inside get you know get on it get in the market get into the trades let's go it's on it's on it's on and it might be you could definitely make money doing this i'm not saying that these people haven't made money but there are people who likely got in late or there's people who are trying to get in now and they're trying to put their stops behind these swing highs or these swing lows right in this case swing highs so that being said what i'm looking for is for us to get higher break these swing highs get more people trapped into the market along with the reversal traders for us to eventually push lower now i have to, I have to end this video by saying that i definitely especially because it's friday right and the way that we moved through the week right because we moved like this on wednesday right so and then we kind of continued it through Thursday. Didn't really continue it too much. We kind of chopped around, but we tried to continue it on Thursday, right? I'm not gonna be surprised if essentially what we have is, because like I said, I don't start trading till seven, but I also stop trading after 10. So this is my window right here, right? Because after 10, I have to get to work, like all my meetings, you know, pretty much I don't have any meetings before 10, 
even before 11 at work, unless it's like an ad hoc thing that I can kind of prepare for beforehand, all this kind of stuff, right? And so essentially what I do is I will like, you know, try to get a lot of my trading done before nine, if I can help it. If I can't help it, I can't help it. But you know, if I'm waiting, I'll probably, you know, open the laptop, start getting to work, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, but that I digress to, if I'm not trading, if it's not within this window, then I can't trade, right? And I'm not gonna be surprised if an opportunity does not present itself within this window. Why? Well, I think we still need to push higher and get above these highs. And so I think we could use this time frame of seven to 10. And this is just something that I've seen for my back testing, especially in the times when I lose and I don't have the opportunity. Because a lot of times when I lose in my back testing, um, if it's a quote unquote a normal day, not the kind of day I'm describing now, what will happen is I'll lose early in the morning and then the later in the morning entry will be a winner. Now, I'm not going to say I'm only going to wait and trade at the end and later in the morning because, you know, there are times when I do take an early in the morning winner. So I'm not going to try to, you know, chop and change and pick and choose every single day. Right. That's not staying consistent. But. What I have seen in the days where I take a loss and I don't really get an opportunity to take another trade or I take a loss and then I take a follow up loss are the days where essentially it still needs to set itself up and it's still trying to set itself up through my trading time. And then it'll in, usually it's kind of ready, quote unquote, more at this 12, 15 ish time, right um, to 12, you know, 12 p.m. time. And so because of that, you know, I'm not really trading. And so those are kind of the days where I just kind of take a loss or maybe take two losses and I can't really do anything about it. Right. So that being said, I'm not going to be surprised if we have one of those days today. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Hope it brought some value to you guys and try to see you again next time. Thank you.